So when we observe the mental objects, so we need to understand the striker element and the base sense element and the responsive element. Yesterday, Sierra briefly explained about that. So in this case, the, the striker element, the mental objects which come and strike in the base uh, is uh, called the striker element. Uh, this is the mental objects. This object can, uh, can be included in, the, in the any types of the <coughs> objects uh, which can be think of, which can be thought of, are all called mental objects. And then the base, the sense base, so which is striking by the mental object, is uh, uh, um, subconsciousness. This subconsciousness is uh, especially obvious in the in the sleeping time, and uh, in the daytime also. The moment we hear, we see, hear, smell, and uh, occasionally uh, the subconsciousness in between uh, take place. So this subconsciousness is uh, can be compared with the door of the mental objects, and then this subconsciousness normally followed by the examining consciousness, which is called the manodara um, vajana, and then uh, the heart, on which these. Um, examining consciousness and a subconsciousness are based. The three type of uh, elements or phenomena are called manodara, um, the entrance or door of the mental objects. So mental objects normally come into uh, come and strike in the base on these uh, on these on these doors or uh, it is a entrance. So in Bali it is called, these are called uh, Manodwara, the doors of the mind. So in the ba- on the base, uh, this thinking mind uh, take place, uh, responsive element uh, take place. When the mental object come and strike on the sense Base, the responsive element uh, that is thinking mind take place. So the the attachment or greed, anger or hatred, uh, the, this type of unwholesome mental state, or the wholesome mental state, uh, they are come under this thinking mind, uh, responsive element. So when the mental object objects come and strike on the base, uh, this type of thinking mind uh, take place as a responsive element. And then this responsive element thinking mind is followed by the mental contact, uh, which is uh, connected with the thinking, analyzing, and then sensation. So these three thinking mind and uh, mental contact and uh, mental sensation are called responsive element. Yesterday, Sarah explained briefly uh, this point uh, is uh, briefly explained. Today, Sarah will continue uh, some more about this point. So when we observe the thinking mind, we can find it as a uh, thinking process, uh, thinking or sometimes daydreaming, uh, wondering, analyzing, reasoning, 
or keeping something in our mind, perceiving, these are all come under the thinking mind. So when we observe the thinking mind, we can uh, realize uh, uh, this thinking mind as uh, such this. So this thinking mind is the, the thinking mental process. So these mental elements or mental process are uh, noted as thinking, uh, planning, judgment, or paying attention, or observing, or watching, and so on. So every time we think about something or someone, our uh, thinking mind takes place. That thinking mind uh, is a responsive element. So the, the mental object uh, is uh, come and strike on the base, and then responsive element, thinking mind, take place. So Manodwara, uh, just as mentioned, the, the door of the mind, the doors of mind, uh, which is uh, uh, which are the uh, the bhavanga and the subconsciousness and uh, examining mind and uh, and uh, heart itself is a base. On this base, the mental object come and strike, and then thinking mind, responsive element uh, take place. Uh, this thinking mind is followed by the pasa, uh, the mental contact and uh, sensation. Uh, sometimes, according to, accordingly, uh, according to their characteristics, sometimes they are function, sometimes they are manifestation. So, in some way or the other, they come and uh, obvious to us. When our mm, uh, effort, energy, and uh, concentration, and uh, mindfulness gets strong. We are able to see this mental process uh, one after another, rising and uh, passing away from moment to moment. So we we will we will not see any longer uh, the mental process as a solid. We see the mental process in segment and uh, several types of the changes we are able to see when our concentration mindfulness gets strong. So whatever thinking mind it may be, uh, once we notice thinking, we must note, note it as thinking, thinking. Sometimes we may miss, sometimes we, uh, we remember to, to note the thinking mind as it is. Uh, but anyway, we we, we must make a uh, strong determination uh, to note thinking mind uh, once, once, it, once it occurs to us. Then when our concentration and the mindfulness become strong, uh, we are able to catch the thinking mind once it takes place. But in the beginning, yogi encounters several times the thinking mind, all the time yogi wrestles with the thinking mind. But uh, without uh, hesitation, we must note thinking mind, and later we have upper hand on it. So if we observe the thinking mind, the moment it, take, it takes place, take place we we will be able to see uh, the one of the elements or striker element or base element or responsive element. So we will find then as a uh, phenomena, and then we are able to see some more. Uh, that is the changes or impermanence of the phenomena. So that's uh, the seeing, the impermanence of the phenomena, and then the state of the impermanence. This is uh, called a nature, a nature, nupasana. 
the seeing impermanence or realization of the impermanence. So when we continue noting this uh, mental process, we are bound to see uh, the changes of the mental process and uh, their impermanence. And uh, these mind and body process are subject to the impermanence. They fall victim to impermanence. So we will see the mental and the physical phenomena as a suffering or unsatisfactoriness. Uh, this is a realization of the dukkha or the suffering. And then later, when our concentration, mindfulness gets uh, stronger, we are able to see these mental and physical processes uh, as, a, as, as a phenomena. There's a no person or individual or ego involved in, in those mental and physical processes. Only my and body process arising and passing away from moment to moment. So thus we are able to see uh, the impermanence and uh, suffering and uh, non-ego or the phenomena. Uh, th- this is uh, the vipassana, vipassana jnana. So minds are very uh, unusual. Uh, Without control, it can go anywhere. So if we don't uh, astray, if we don't uh, restrain the mind, the mind all the time becomes restless, uh, smelling and so on. All the time he uh, goes after the sensual pleasure. So it's very difficult to have control over the mind <coughs> because it is uh, very quick, very fast. <coughs> it uh, changes all the time. One moment, whole some mind takes place. Next moment, a whole some mind takes place. So all the time changing. Why we are practicing? meditation, our mind goes to the sensual pleasure. While we are paying respect to the Buddha, we are worshipping to the Buddha, Dhamma and the Sangha. And then, the next moment, we get angry with someone. So one moment, we are counting beats, a recollection of the Buddha. And then, next moment, we, we, we get angry with someone or something. It's a very difficult to have control over the mind. So nothing is uh, quicker than the mind. Mind is uh, the quickest in the world. So if we imagine through the mind, we can go anywhere. Uh, wherever we, we have ever been or we, we have never been, anywhere we can reach, within a simple second, through the mind. So mind is uh, such a quick element. That's why the Buddha said um, uh, mind is uh, quick, uh, fast, uh, in Pali, uh, very quick, very fast. And then Dhonegha is uh, very difficult, very difficult to, uh, to oppress the mind, very difficult to control the mind. And then Yata Gama Nipa Dino is a going wherever it wants. Sometimes <coughs> we are practicing in the meditation hall, but mind is not in the meditation hall, going somewhere. Or anywhere, it can be a suitable place or unsuitable place, the mind is going irrespective of the ones, uh, our, our prestige or our, uh, 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 our knowledge or our, uh, our virtue. They don't care. 
the mind go anywhere uh, without being respected to our uh, status. Uh, whatever status uh, we are in, uh, the mind can go anywhere, suitable or unsuitable, or uh, proper or improper. Even the monks, fully ordained monks, even there's uh, maybe Syaroji or the abbot or chief monk, whoever it is, if he has, uh, if he is not able to uh, restrain the mind, the mind goes anywhere. Don't care the one's status, monks or Syaroji or the and the abbot, chief monk, or whoever it is. Minds, uh, their minds don't care, they go anywhere. So that's why the Buddha said mind is very difficult to, to tame. So difficult to tame. Difficult to be cultivated or to be developed. A very untamed, untamed mind, untamed mind. So we must note the mind, uh, the moment it takes place, so that we are able to have control over it. Otherwise, this mind all the time uh, subject to the raga, dosa and moha, uh, greed, anger or hatred or aversion or delusion. So we must protect our mind in advance from the several types of mental element which come and which uh, which usually come and spoil our mind. So what well, all we have to do is we must observe the mind, thinking mind, the moment it takes place. We must tame like this. And then later it be, can become well trained and uh, uh, well tamed as, and become very gentle and uh, subtle, uh, very uh, noble and uh, virtuous. Then we are able to keep our mind away from the mental department. Our mind becomes uh, purified. So once our mind is about to leave to the unwholesome objects or sensory pleasure, we can catch it and uh, note it. In this way we are able to tame our mind <coughs> and make our mind civilized or uh, gentle. And uh, later our mind becomes peaceful and uh, gentle and uh, polite and uh, civilized and tamed. So this mind uh, provides us with the happiness. This tame, tamed mind itself helps us to attain to attain the happiness. So that's why the Buddha said the Sukha Vaha. So the, the tamed mind uh, provides us with the happiness. The team. So we have to note the mind. Uh, which can go to the sensory pleasure if we fail to note, note it the moment it takes place. So we have to note the mind, thinking mind, uh, once it takes place. And then later in due, in due course of time, our mind is um, uh, focused on the object longer and longer. And then the mind can stay away from the since we are pleasure for quite some time. So this will become uh, tamed, uh, more gentle than usual. And later our concentration and mindfulness gets stronger and stronger. When we observe the phenomena, the moment they take place, when we observe them from, the moment, uh, from moment to moment, then we are bound to see the true characteristics or true nature or the phenomena, and then there are changes or impermanence. 
And then we are able to see the phenomena uh, uh, falling victim to the impermanence. So we see the phenomena as a suffering. Uh, and then there is no ego entity involved in the phenomena. That's the only mental and physical process. They are in the action, in the relation. All the time arising and passing away. The old phenomena pass away and a new phenomena take place from moment to moment. All the time changing. So for example, when we note rising, falling or the abdomen, we are all the heat or cold or any types of the mental activities or thinking, we are able to see the phenomena, mental or physical, arising and passing away. They arise and passing away in segments. So that's our domain or knowledge, our feet or the knowledge become wider and wider. So if we continue noting, observing or watching phenomena, the moment they take place, then the situation uh, is changed. The object to be observed becomes uh, later less and less. Or sometimes the objects to observe, to be observed, uh, will become too subtle to, to be aware of uh, properly. So in this way, the the objects become less and less in quantity, and uh, finally we may experience the cessation of the objects uh, together with the noted mind. We can feel as if we are reborn uh, in this very life again. So if we are enlightened like this, or that means we are, we are expected to attain the mega knowledge, then we are bound to free from the, uh, the lower rebirth. We will be never reborn in the lower lives. Because we are able to get rid of mental defilements which can lead us to the lower life. So there is uh, no chance for, for rebirth in the lower life because we are able to keep the mental defilement which, uh, which can lead us to the lower life uh, from, coming, from coming to us. So this is uh, the tamed, our tamed mind which help us not to be reborn in the lower life. That's why the Buddha says, uh, Sukha Vaha, the mind itself, when tamed, can help us uh, to obtain the happiness or not to be reborn in the lower life. So that's why the Buddha says, Sukha Vaha, uh, the happiness career. So the donekata lahuno is that the is uh, the the standards or the poem as mentioned in the uh, Pali Pali text by the Buddha. So to for easy understanding, for better understanding, to, or, and uh, for the uh, ordinary people who is not familiar with the. Pali literature. So the Bhamis poem is uh, composed by the late Venerable Mahasi Siaro. And then the, the, the meaning of the poem is uh, just as Siaro explained. Uh, the mind is uh, very difficult to tame, and very quick and fast. It can go anywhere. So if we are able to tame the mind, the, the tame mind itself will lead us to the happiness and the peacefulness. This is uh, the meaning of the, the poem. 
just zero leaders. So if we are able to note uh, the mental process or any types of the phenomena, the moment they take place, then our concentration and mindfulness become jiva and strong. We are uh, able to tame our mind, which can lead us to the happiness and peacefulness. So all we have to do is note whatever objects, physical or mental or emotional, uh, we note the moment they take place. So here yogis are noting all the time uh, as much as possible, each and every second, uh, without stop, to, in order to tame uh, the mind. Then later in due course of time, mind becomes tamed, and then uh, it can bring us the happiness. Such a mind is a very uh, valuable and priceless, and uh, uh, it's priceless and uh, highly recommended by the Buddha.